Hi everyone, today we will explore one important type of surfaces called surfaces of revolution. And using them, we will show that a generalization of the Moon in a Puddle theorem for surfaces is impossible. To generate the surface of revolution, we take gamma, a simple smooth regular curve in the plane, and a line L that doesn't intersect gamma. We then think of these two objects in the three-dimensional space and rotate gamma around L. This object is the surface of revolution associated to gamma. Of course, after updating our coordinate system, we can assume that gamma lives in the xd plane and L is the z axis. If gamma is parametrized by v and u goes from 0 to 2 pi, this surface can be covered by the chart phi given by gamma 1 of v equals u, gamma 1 of v sine u, and gamma 2 of v. This chart covers the entire surface except gamma. If we want to cover the entire surface, we would need a second chart with u ranging in an interval containing zero. A concrete example of this construction is the following. If gamma is the curve given by sine of v, comma cosine of v, with v going from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, then the surface of revolution of gamma is the unit sphere. Similarly, if gamma is a circle that doesn't touch L, then the corresponding surface of revolution is a torus. Now let's study its curvature. For that purpose, we will call the curves with U constant meridians and the curves with V constant parallels. All meridians have the shape of gamma and all parallels are circles. Notice that each meridian lives in a plane containing both the meridian and the line L, and such plane is perpendicular to all parallels. When we look at the Gauss map restricted to that meridian, its image is contained in the intersection of the sphere with the corresponding plane. This implies that when we take the derivative of the Gauss map along a meridian, we get a vector tangent to such meridian. This is saying that the directions tangent to the meridians are eigenspaces of the shape operator. Recall that to compute the shape operator in a certain direction w, we take any curve with velocity w, in this case we can take a meridian, and take the derivative of n along such curve. So one principal curvature is given by how much is the curve gamma bending the direction of n, which in absolute value coincides with the curvature of gamma. Since the shape operator is self-adjoint, its eigenspaces are orthogonal, so the directions tangent to the parallels are eigenspaces as well. Restricted to a parallel, the Gauss map has image in a circle of radius r. From here, it is easy to compute that in absolute value, the principal curvature corresponding to this parallel is given by r over gamma 1, where gamma 1 was the distance from gamma to the axis of rotation, and the radius of the parallel we are looking at. I'll leave it as an exercise to you to use the parametrization phi I gave you earlier to obtain explicit formulas for the principal curvatures in terms of v, gamma, and its derivatives. This gives a recipe to construct surfaces of revolution with small curvature. If a plane curve gamma is such that its absolute curvature is bounded by 1 and is at distance at least 1 from a line L, then the principal curvatures of the surface of revolution associated to gamma and L are bounded by 1 in absolute value. Now we go back to the Moon in a Puddle theorem. We proved a couple of lessons ago that if we have a simple closed smooth regular curve in the plane with absolute curvature less than 1, then it contains a unit circle in its interior. Another way to phrase this theorem could be if a curve has less curvature than the unit circle, then it has a unit circle inside. A possible generalization of this result to surfaces would look somewhat like this. If a surface has less curvature than the unit sphere, then it has a sphere inside. For closed curves in the plane, the concept of inside was given by the Jordan curve theorem. But for surfaces, we first need an analog of the concept of closed. We say that a surface in the three-dimensional space is closed if it is compact and it doesn't have a boundary. For surfaces of this kind, there is an analog of the Jordan curve theorem. If sigma is a closed surface, then its complement has two connected components, one of which is bounded and we call it the interior of sigma. With this, we can now state what would be a surface analog of the Moon in a Puddle theorem. 
If a closed surface sigma is such that its principal curvatures are bounded in absolute value by 1, then its interior contains a unit sphere. However, this is wrong. Vladimir Lagunov constructed a closed surface with principal curvatures bounded in absolute value by 1, and the largest sphere containing its interior has radius less than 1 over 6. Now we will see how this construction goes. We begin with three curves arranged as follows. Two of them are half circles of radius 1, and the other one consists of concatenating three parts of circle of radius slightly more than 1. We then extend these curves by attaching long horizontal lines, say, of length 5. Building the surfaces of revolution of these curves, we obtain three surfaces all homeomorphic to a sphere. Let's call S1 this set of three surfaces. S1 satisfies some properties that we were looking for. Its principal curvatures are bounded in absolute value by 1. The parts coming from the straight lines are planar disks, so they have zero curvature. Since the circles we started with have curvature at most 1, and they were far from the axis of rotation, their principal curvatures are bounded in absolute value by 1 as well. Also, if we look at the region in between the surfaces, the largest sphere that we could fit inside would be at this spot, where it can be explicitly computed that the radius is less than 1 over 6. Of course, this is not a counterexample to the muni napudel theorem for surfaces, because S1 consists of three surfaces, not one. To fix this issue, one has to connect the two rooms with the exterior. This is done similarly to how Bing's house is constructed, just in case you are familiar with that construction. Now consider two half circles as in the picture, one with radius 1 and the other with radius slightly more than 1. If the two half circles are a distance more than 1 from an axis of rotation, the corresponding surface of revolution will have absolute curvatures bounded in absolute value by 1. Let's call this surface a tube. Then we come back to the surface S1 and perform some surgery. To connect the lower room with the exterior, we remove four discs from the floor and ceiling of the upper room and attach a tube, obtaining S2. And to connect the upper room with the exterior, we remove four discs in the lower room and attach a second tube, obtaining S3. The surface that we end up with has principal curvatures bounded by 1, and the largest sphere in its interior has radius less than 1 over 6. You may have noticed there is a little bit of cheating, because when we patch these surfaces of revolution together, we don't get a smooth surface but a C1 surface that is, a subset of the plane that is locally the graph of a C1 function instead of a smooth function. Fixing that is not very difficult, but it is very technical, so we will not worry about that in here. This example shows that an analog of the muni napodal theorem for surfaces is false. Also notice that its Gauss curvature is in absolute value less than 1, so an analog of the theorem using Gauss curvature instead of principal curvatures is also false. I hope you enjoy this construction and see you next time.